welcome back to my channel. My name is Anita Cavazos and I'm an LPC associate here from the state of Texas. So today's video is going to be a really chill q and A. I I took some of your video requests that you all left for me in the community tab and I decided to group some topics together to make a video. So definitely grab your favorite beverage. I have some cherry blossom green tea here, so that's what I'm going to be drinking. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about some really fun topics, but first I'm gonna go ahead and drink some of my tea and I will catch up with you all again in a second and we'll start having our little chat. Okay everyone, so the first topic question that I was asked is what is it like being a Latina therapist in this career field? And so one of the most important things for me as a Latine Latinx therapist has been to do my own work and knowing what that means for me and the things that show up for myself, learning to embrace my Latinidad and whatever that looks like with my Spanglish, with speaking two different languages, honestly three, because I feel like Spanglish, it's its own thing. If you know, you know. And really my Spanglish only naturally comes out when I'm having a conversation with another colleague, with family, with clients, it just naturally flows. It's not really something I can just replicate <laughs> unless I'm having a conversation, I just code switch. And when I say Latina, I think it's super important to note that I identify in the grander scheme as Latina, but what I also identify with is being Mexican-American. So both of my parents are Mexican. I grew up here in the United States, and I wanted to share this because sometimes what we end up seeing is that Latinos or Latine folks get kind of packaged together when in reality there's so many different cultures even within the latin culture as a whole it's not a monolith there's so much variety and so many of us identify differently as well so i'm going to be sharing my experience being a latina mexican-american and specifically from south texas from the rio grande valley el valle de texas it's super important to note that because if you were to watch a video with let's say the latina who lives in Arizona or California, we're all going to have different experiences based on our own communities. And so let me first talk to you all about the Rio Grande Valley, my community where I was born and raised. And I still live and work from here, but I end up seeing clients remotely all across Texas. But I personally chose to stay in my hometown because even though I've traveled and I've loved doing that, the valley feels like home to me. I get to walk into a store and hear Spanish. It's just normal. I feel more of a culture shock whenever I have traveled and I don't see that. It feels really weird to me. You grow up going to school and most of your teachers look and sound like you, like they could be your tia. And also I chose to go to my local university here in my hometown as well. So that is where I got my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and the majority of of my colleagues and people that I went to school with looked like me, sounded like me. Here in the Rio Grande Valley, Latinos, Latine folks, we are the majority. We don't know what it's like to be the minority around here, which I think is a very unique experience because the farther up you travel up Texas, Texas is a huge state, you start to see that less and less. Like there's more smaller pockets of Latino communities. But when you're here in the valley, there are taco stands all across. Like our culture is just everywhere and i love it so much and the main reason that i wanted to become a therapist was to create more representation because as a whole in our country there isn't enough and it continues to grow and more of us become therapists so it's something beautiful to watch but the reason that i wanted to become a therapist was because i thought of people within my own family. I thought of my grandma, my mom, and the thought of people that I cared about in my community going to see a therapist who didn't understand their culture, didn't understand certain phrases, all of these nuances that come with being Latino, and then was then tasked with the responsibility of diagnosing, providing treatment. I knew that I personally wanted to be in those conversations, wanted to be a part of creating mental health changes in my community, and that goes here in my hometown and for Latinos all across Texas. I've worked with different populations from adolescents to adults, women, men, the LGBTQ plus I community, like 
various different populations that I've had the special privilege of working with and helping to create a safe space for them in the mental health field. And so now that I started my own therapy business, I decided to specialize in mostly working with women and even more specifically Latina women who are dealing with anxiety, depression, or with certain transitions or who simply want to have a safe space to show up as their authentic self, to explore what their Latinidad means to them or the healing that needs to happen within their families. And so I can't speak for everyone in my culture, but I know for me growing up, mental health was not something that was ever talked about. If anything, physical health and spiritual health were very heavily talked about, but mental health was not even a topic of conversation. If anything, putting yourself first was a big taboo topic. To this day, it's something that a lot of Latina women or families struggle with because you grow up really being taught that you're supposed to put your family first above all things. Family is the most important thing. And so something that I really strive for when working with Latino folks in my community, whether locally or all across Texas, is talking about mental health, those taboo topics that we weren't really allowed to talk about growing up and normalizing them. And knowing that both can be true, you can love and respect your family and also have moments where you put yourself first and have those healthy boundaries that ultimately allow you to show up in the spaces that you need to with your family, in your personal life, in your career, and just embrace being more authentic in your own Latinidad and the way that you represent your culture without all of the noise of what others say that you should do. And so because of that, some of my struggles as a Latina therapist are also knowing that there are people in my community who don't really recognize therapy as legit or who see it as something that only is for locals, like crazy people. You have to really have big issues to go to therapy. So that is a huge struggle in trying to normalize and have these conversations because social media posts can be really helpful in reaching certain audiences, but when you're from a tight-knit community and trying to service the people here, it really is having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. And so that's also why I went and did a speaking engagement in my community and just talking about normalizing mental health, even for me, you know, as a therapist, because even with my master's degree, I still have to talk to my own mom, my own Mexican mom about what therapy is, why it's important, why self-care is important. And it is an ongoing conversation, y'all. And I've seen the benefits of having those conversations so that is part of the struggle, part of what I love doing though. I love it so much. I still hold very close to my heart. One of my sessions that I had with one of my clients, and of course I won't give out details or, or anything like that, HIPAA of course, but what I will share is that hearing this client, she's someone who is around my mom's age, very sweet, Mexican mom who did not believe in therapy hearing her telling me, you know, I was wrong about therapy and thinking that it couldn't help me hearing her say how our therapeutic relationship changed her life for the better is my why. That is my reason why. Seeing how families get to have their loved ones back in a way, especially for those of us we know firsthand what it looks like for families to be having a moment where they're struggling where mental health hasn't been prioritized and we see what that looks like and so personally to hear that her family members felt like they had their mom back their grandma back callate, i was like crying after after that session and that has not been the only moment getting to see my clients just step into what their latinidad means to them owning it not giving a shit about people calling you a no sabo kid or whatever they want to define you as being able to just embrace 
who you are and owning that, seeing my clients step into themselves in that way and prioritizing their mental health. It's the most rewarding thing in the world and is my why. It's why I love doing what I do because I really do try being the therapist that I wish I would have had growing up. I did not have access to mental health services. My family didn't know about it. And even if they did, they probably would not have allowed me to go because to this day I still hear things like I can be your therapist you know you don't need therapy you have family our Latino family can be that huge support for us but they can't be our therapist and so that's why I came into this field and I love being myself I've loved embracing that I've worked in some places and mostly in community health is where I've felt most connected to other counselors because we just embrace our latinidad speak our spanglish talk to our community and just show up unapologetically but there have been pockets where i've worked and it's just felt very like professional and just doesn't feel authentic to me and how i express who i am as a counselor so getting to step into my own business and being my authentic self and inviting my clients to be who they are is something so special. I love it so much. Now, one of the other topics that I got asked about was what it's like working with the Latinx population. And so something important to note is that not each pocket of the Latino community is the same at all. So in my area, people still heavily call themselves Hispanic. That is what is mostly said around here. Like if I were to walk into a store and be like, where are my latinx folks at or where are my latin people people would be looking at you like what the hell is that like what does that even mean what are you saying and so even knowing the terminologies that are spoken in the area that you're working with so when i am working with clients i like asking them what they identify as you know do they identify as hispano Tejana, Chicana, whatever have you. It's super important to ask what each person identifies as because what I identify as is different from what my client may. And so yes, I came into this career to offer more representation, not only in appearance and culturally, but also language and i forever continue to work on my spanish it's something that is forever evolving because i grew up with spanish being my first language but as we know when you grow up in the american school system it sadly does a really great job of erasing your spanish really well so i had to work really hard to try to continue to hold tight to my native language and it has not always been easy like it can feel really hard at times and so that's another factor to be aware of when you're working with the population knowing that you're working with henta with folks who have had to battle being mexican enough being american enough and trying to make something of their authentic culture in their area and the community where they live it's, it's like this constant battle so there's definitely little nuances and factors like that that are very important to make note of that unfortunately when you read a book in your grad school it really doesn't go into the nuances even the books that i read they talked a lot about machismo and books love talking about machismo i feel like it's the only thing that they know how to talk about when there's so much more that goes into our culture or they also really like saying that most latinos are catholic and again they just love grouping people together in a certain way when in reality if you were to walk down the street you'll see a mexican dad who's like pushing his baby down the stroller with his wife you'll see latinos in our local university or in our local colleges just living their life speaking spanglish or spanish with their friends and families at carnazadas on the weekends some latinos identify as catholic some identify as christian go to church they don't some are atheists or choose not to believe in anything i think it's super important to Yes, learn about the culture from people who are a part of the culture, but also continue to be open to knowing that clients have their own lived experience. Maybe some of them grew up with a dad who was very absent, very emotionally unavailable, it tends to be common but maybe some of our clients didn't they had a dad who maybe tried their best to not be very machista and to continue to learn like you just never know which is why it's super important to really get to know clients history and their unique 
upbringing while considering what culture meant for them, you know, and what that looked like for them. Because something else that you will see specific to my population is we're a border town. So we have a consistent flow of people who do immigrate into this country. So they will come in with their own ideals from Mexico and the generations. And that looks completely different from people who have been here for generations, even though it is literally just a river and a bridge that separates us. There are different mentalities, different ideals and the way they see things. And I've experienced this firsthand. Even from my days of working near our local convention center, there would always be couples and folks from Mexico that would come over on the weekends and have a good time. It's very common to see that around here because we are a border town. But sometimes even I would have people from Mexico from like an older generation, you know, having the audacity to tell me, you know, why don't you speak Spanish? Speak it correctly. Definitely very colonizer mentality, very similar to why don't you speak English, you know? And both of these folks don't understand the unique experience of what it's like growing up here, being Mexican American and having to battle these two things of not being Mexican enough, not being American enough. And so that's why it's something that I've had to make peace with and standing up for myself and also holding space to teach my clients to prioritize their mental health and embracing what that Latinidad looks like for them. Something else that's also very difficult is because we are a border town, we are that place that shows up on the news where politicians and newscasters love talking about the border wall and all of that shit that's happening. And reality-wise, what that looks like for me as a therapist working here, it is very infuriating and frustrating knowing that when I drive to one of the smaller towns to go visit my grandparents' graveyard where they have like all of our families with the same last name, there's huge posters of people having to say, we don't want your border wall and seeing how that's also affecting like our National Butterfly Center. It had to shut down because they were getting threats from people who aren't even from here deciding to come here and stand up for an ideal that most of us don't identify with. And then you're also battling with some Latinos and some Hispanic folks here from the area who do sadly believe in that for so many different complex reasons, right? Where you've been kind of made to erase your own culture and accept ideals that really don't identify with being a compassionate human being to other people, you know, who who are having a hard time, who don't have it the same way. It isn't just the ignorance that goes around that. So imagine having to like hear that from people who are not a part of your culture, but then people who are too, like it's a huge brain F moment. Like it's just, yeah. So all of those things are topics and factors that I try to make space for within therapy services with my clients and talking about how some of those things make them feel current events as you all know in my last video all of these things that affect our communities not only in the large scale but as a whole when you see something like that happen so that is all that i can think about for sharing you know with this i feel like it's such a huge topic and conversation i would love to have these conversations with other therapists too but moving on to the next topic and that is networking and some of the issues and some of the difficulties and successes i've had with that so i can honestly say that the first people that embraced me when i came on instagram when i came on social media were people from my own community so other latine latinx folks and i still talk to those women they are women who have really made a huge impact in my own career there are women who encouraged me who continue to inspire me and oddly enough a lot of those women are from my hometown and just like moved out and did other things too so it's just beautiful to see all around where life can take us and the things that we end up doing and so personally i would label my networking as being successful and i think part of that success is coming from just showing up as my authentic self and continuing to learn what that looks like because whatever i show up as that's what i'm going to be attracting right so if i don't show up as my authentic self then i won't be creating those authentic relationships and connections which has been a huge goal of mine since starting this youtube channel as well and i've been able to connect and network with so many of you which has been really special i've always tried to show up as my authentic self 
genuine like if you meet me in person i am pretty much the same the only difference is that i would like to consider myself very funny i love cracking jokes it's, it's the mexican in me it's a stereotype that's actually true <laughs> But yeah, literally what you see is what you get if you were to meet me in person. I always strive to make people feel comfortable and welcome in whatever space I'm in. I want people to just have that freedom to show up and be able to be who they are because we don't always get that in life all the time to get to be in spaces where we get to feel comfortable and so when it comes to networking with others i think that is the biggest thing just showing up as authentic as you can as you as you can we are really taught in grad school whether they say it clearly like this or not to basically erase ourselves a little bit and to keep who we are private and show up as this professional image when in reality when we are working in the field with people they're not connecting to an image they're connecting to who we are that is what keeps our clients coming and it's the same thing that welcomes people to connect with us and to network with us when they feel that instant connection knowing that you know you're coming to them simply to create community and not because you want something out of the situation because that is something that happens sometimes whether you work virtually or in person you will always come across people who don't necessarily want to get to know you as a person and create those connections without wanting something in return it has also happened to me sometimes when people around me have heard that i have a youtube channel or i have this or that for my business instantly it's well how can i use that for me and so for me huge red flag right it's something that i recognize and i try to stay away from and try to just be around people who just want to connect with me to connect with me and that's speaking more on a personal level right the kind of friendships and colleague friendships that you end up having so something that's also been helpful for me is joining a specific network or meetups for latina therapists i've only done one meeting so far because i just found out about it but i love it it's something that i want to continue doing to hear about other latine folks' experiences in different states so i know personally that's something that i want to continue learning about because future wise you know in my practice i would like to become licensed in other states where there is a latino or latine population where i can service as well so that's definitely something that i'm planning for in the future but all of that starts off with networking and creating genuine relationships so you can go up to people and ask a question and have them ask you questions too right it being like this two-way mutual thing where you're getting to just learn from each other and so i am grabbing my tea for now if you have any other questions for me feel free to leave it down in the comment section or share what it's like you know being a latina therapist or a therapist in training counselor in training for you what that experience has felt like like i said there's so much more that we could talk about but for now i'm going to go ahead and end this video i'm really glad we got to have this chat if you like this video like it leave me a comment down below all of these things help support my channel so that i can keep creating videos for you all cuídense mucho y nos vemos en el próximo video take care everyone and i will see you in my next video bye